If batteries weren't a thing, mobile phones, laptops, and electric vehicles would probably not be around. As a matter of fact, we wouldn't even be able to start conventional IC engine cars without batteries. And as technology focuses on enhancing and simplifying the way we live, batteries have become an essential part of achieving this goal. But how do batteries do this? Well, that is what this video is here to tell you. Batteries provide electrical energy through electrochemical reactions that take place within them. Here's how this happens. In every battery are two metal rods, an anode and a cathode, called electrodes. They are immersed in a chemical medium called an electrolyte that provides a conductive path for the movement of ions to and from the electrodes. When a circuit with a battery is complete, chemical reactions take place and prompt the flow of electrons through the circuit. Negatively charged electrons travel across the external circuit and the positively charged ions move across the electrolyte. And it is this flow of charges that provides electrical energy and powers devices in its path. Before we move on, let's clear up a common confusion. While you may have heard batteries and cells being used synonymously, they are actually not the same. While a cell is a single unit of a battery pack, a group of cells connected together is what we call a battery pack. Now, coming to the two main types of cells, primary and secondary cells. Primary cells are non-rechargeable and secondary cells are rechargeable. Common examples of primary cells include dry and alkaline cells used in flashlights, remote controls, and toys. If these primary cells were used in mobile phones, we'd be replacing them each time the charge drained out. And it is to overcome this hassle that secondary cells were developed. Secondary cells are used in mobile phones, laptops, and electric vehicles. Over the course of their lifetime, rechargeable cells go through multiple charge cycles. A charge cycle is the process of completely charging and discharging rechargeable cells. Examples of secondary cells in order of their development are the lead acid battery, nickel cadmium battery, nickel metal hydride battery, and the lithium ion battery. While major manufacturers use lithium ion batteries to power the motor due to their high energy density, the nickel metal hydride batteries are used in hybrid EVs. To make use of the stored energy, the external circuit has to be completed. In EVs, a starter motor acts as the electrical load and is connected across the two terminals of the battery. As this completes the circuit, the battery begins to discharge. During discharge, the anode is the negatively charged electrode because it is where the electrons are generated. And since the cathode receives electrons, it is a positively charged electrode. When all the charge gets used up, the battery needs to be recharged again using an external power source, which for EVs is primarily a charging station. By recharging the battery, the chemical reactions within it get reversed and restore the electrodes back to their charged state. This is done by reversing the polarities of the two electrodes. The external power source redirects the electrons back to the anode and the positive ions to the cathode. As charging an EV battery at a charging station takes around 30 minutes or more, drivers may opt to go to a battery swapping station where they can physically swap out their drained battery pack for a fully charged one. There are two types of battery packs used in EVs, the traction and auxiliary battery packs. The traction battery pack powers the motor that propels the EV, and the auxiliary battery pack powers various components like the headlights and infotainment systems. Although lead-acid batteries are rechargeable, their low capacity is not sufficient to power the traction battery pack. Instead, these batteries are used to power auxiliary systems in the EV. An ideal EV battery should have high power-to-rate ratio, greater capacity for a longer range, 
and high specific energy. At the moment, the lithium-ion battery tops the list when compared to the lead-acid battery and nickel-metal hydride battery. While they all provide electrical energy to power the EV, each rechargeable battery uses its own material and medium. In fact, the same type of battery can even have different chemistries. For instance, the lithium-ion battery has six unique chemistries with unique properties suited for different uses. EVs commonly make use of lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide and lithium metal phosphate batteries. Most EV battery packs have thousands of lithium ion cells covered by a plastic casing with an insulating lid. The casing is divided into many compartments with insulating partitions in between them. Each compartment has cells connected in series or parallel. Cells in a battery are connected in series or parallel depending on the output power required. A series connection is used to improve the voltage range of batteries, and a parallel connection increases battery capacity. In some cases, a combination of series and parallel connections can improve battery efficiency. By combining many cells together, the voltage is increased to the level needed to power the EV. It takes approximately 400 to 800 volts and sometimes even more to power an EV. So while a single cell may be sufficient to power your electronic devices, it is definitely not enough to power an EV.